Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. On one of my recent videos, I was asked if I could make a video explaining how to arrange strings. And my first thought was, oh no, this is going to be hard. And that's because arranging strings can be hard. But don't worry, I spent a lot of time breaking it down and brushing up on my music theory. And today we're going to keep it simple, but still end up with a great sounding string arrangement. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. I'm going to do a little warning before I start this video. This video does require some very basic knowledge about keys and how to read music. I will put the note names in all the examples that I show throughout this video to try and help, but I'll also leave some links in the description to help you with reading music and give you a bit of information about keys as well. When people decide to add strings to their music, they generally choose to use a string quartet. And this is a group of four stringed instruments, typically made up of two violins, which we call violin one and violin two, a viola and a cello. Violin one normally plays the highest melody line, and then violin two plays a slightly lower but still high melody line, viola plays a lower melody line, and the cello plays the lowest line, or the bass line. And so technically, we have four different voices, much like with a typical choir, where you have the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And so when we write music for string quartets, we tend to follow the rules of Bach chorales. And now, Bach chorales are certainly very, very interesting, but they're also very confusing. There are lots and lots of different rules to follow, and if I were to explain them all to you, we'd be here for days. I studied them for two years and barely even scraped the surface. So today I'm going to show you how to write music for a string quartet that will sound nice, but may not necessarily follow all of these rules. I think that the main reason strings are so tricky to write for is that you've not only got to think horizontally across the stave, but also vertically. What I mean by this is we have to consider each individual melody line that the instruments are playing, but we also have to consider the chords that the melody lines are creating when all four of them play together. And this can be really confusing when you start writing for strings. It's certainly something that I struggled with the most. Now we all want to write these beautifully complex string arrangements, but to be able to do that we need to start off really, really simply and work our way up to there. So we want to start with a really simple rhythm. We want to make sure that all four parts play the same rhythm and only change notes when the chord changes. We also need to make sure that all notes of the chords are played. So throughout the four parts, the three notes of the chords need to be covered. And to be completely honest, that sounds hard enough in itself. So let's start by having a look at how to do this. The best place to start is to write the bass line first. And this is the lowest notes of the arrangement and is normally played by the cello. But some people like to add in a double bass to their arrangement too, which is basically just the cello doubled. Anyways, this bass line it is easiest to follow the chord progression and to get the cello to play the root notes of each of the chords. So if the progression is C, A minor, F, G as played by the piano, the cello would play C, A, F, G. Here's the chord progression and the bass line playing together. And it is completely normal for a bass line to sound a bit jumpy. It really won't be as obvious when all four parts are playing together. But if you're really unhappy with this and don't like it, then you could consider using inversions, which allows you to change the bass note of the chord without changing the chord itself. Or you could consider using a passing note. And this is a note that we put in basically to bridge the gap between two notes. 
that's the baseline done. Number one off the checklist, so to say. Now comes the slightly trickier part, as we need to use the other three instruments to fill out the rest of the chord. So the things to bear in mind when we're doing this is that we want to make sure that we include all the notes in the chord, and we want these notes to be fairly evenly spread across the stave. What I mean by this is that we don't want the two violins playing up really, really high at the tops of their ranges, and the viola and cello playing really, really low at the bottom of their ranges. We want to occupy the full range. Let's start with the first chord we have in the progression, the chord of C. We already have a C in the cello part, so the two other notes that we have to cover are E and G. But we have four stringed instruments and three notes in a chord. Something's not quite adding up. We're going to have to double a note in the chord, but which note do we choose to double? Traditionally, the root note of the chord is doubled, and so that's what we're going to stick to in this video. So there's a C in the cello. Then I'm going to put a G in the viola, an E in violin two, and then double the C in violin one. There's no specific way to do this. You can just choose which note goes into which instrument. So now you can see that we've covered all the notes in the chord. They're quite nicely spaced apart and the root note of the chord is doubled. Let's hear how it sounds. Then we move on to the next chord and do the same thing. Now, originally, I had the parts like this, which sounds completely fine, but it was too far apart for my liking. So instead I put the A in violin one and the E in violin two, which sounds like this. Pretty much the same, I'll admit, but to me it sounds a bit more strong and full and tight. Then we add the third chord and the fourth, and here's how it sounds all together. So actually, I think that that's quite a nice, balanced, even sounding string arrangement for this particular chord progression so far. But let's have a look at those passing notes that we mentioned to add a bit more interest and excitement to this arrangement. The first opportunity I see for a passing note is in the bass line. There's a nice gap between the C and the A where I could put in a B potentially. And B is a note of the key. So let's see if it works. Then looking back at the score, there's another opportunity between the A and the F to put in a G. Now it sounds like this. Now, that's a lot more interesting than it was, but all the interest is in the bass line. The cello's getting all the fun. So let's have a look at the other instrument lines and see whether we can mix it up a bit. There's a gap in violin one between the A and the C, so let's put a B in there and see if it sounds good. Then in the viola part, there's a huge gap between the A and the D. So let's put an F in there as it's halfway and still in the key. This passing note is a little bit more risky as it's not completely stepwise, but let's have a listen and see whether it works and see if it sounds nice. Luckily for us, it did work. The risk was worth it. And I think you can agree that this string arrangement now sounds a lot more interesting, a lot more complex, and frankly, a lot more impressive than it was by adding in a few little passing notes. So that's how you create a string arrangement based off a chord progression. I personally think that this is easier to do than to build a string arrangement around a melody, but maybe we can do a video on that another time. I also just wanted to quickly add that no matter how many passing notes you want to add to the arrangement, whether that be lots and lots, or one or two, or none at all, I still think that these arrangements sound great. And it's all really about what you feel you can do and how complex you want it to sound. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.